Hi all, welcome to my channel on basic mathematics and in this tutorial let's look at the set theory. First of all, let's look at some basic characteristics of sets. If you look at the definition of a set, a set is any collection or group of objects. Now you can look at this example, A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and usually we denote the values of the sets within curly brackets like this. And if you look at an element which belongs to a certain set, in order to indicate that we use this special symbol, it's like a E. So then if the set A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we can write 1 belongs to A in this manner. We use this special symbol which is like E in order to denote that. If you look at some more characteristics, the order or the repetition of a set are not important. If you look at this set P which contains 1, 2 and Q which contains 2 and 1, you can see that both the sets are contained in the same elements but in a different order. But as I said earlier, as the order is irrelevant, therefore the sets P and Q are equal to each other. They contain the same elements. The order is not important. If you look at the set R, it contains three elements, 1, 2 and 2 and then the repetition of the elements are also not important when it comes to set. So then R is actually a set of 1 and 2 only. Therefore, you can see that all these three sets P, Q and R are equal to each other. Now we will see how to specify a set. There are two methods that you can use to specify a set. In the first method, you list down all the elements. So here you can see that A is equal to A, E, I, O, U. Within curly brackets, we write down all the elements in the list. The second method is, we can state the property which characterizes the elements in the set. Now, if you look at the first method, we have written down all the elements in the set. So rather than writing down all the elements, we can write down what is meant by the values in the set. So that is X is a vowel in the English alphabet. So you can write this sentence instead of writing all the elements. The main reason we have two methods of writing down a set is sometimes the number of elements in the set will be very large. You will not be able to write it down like this in the first method. Therefore in a situation like that if there are more elements than you can write down then you can just state that as a sentence. Now you have a basic idea about sets. Let's look at different types of sets. So the first set we are going to look at is the universal set, which is denoted by symbol capital U or this symbol that is called the epsilon. The universal set is the set that contains all the elements being considered in a given discussion. For example, you can look at the population of a country or the set of all schools on planet Earth. So likewise, if you consider all the elements in a given set, that is coming under the universal set. Next, we will look at the null set or the set which contains nothing. It will be denoted by this symbol that is zero with a strike like this. We can uh, define it in this manner. There is something called a cardinality of a set that is the number of elements in the set. So in a null set, the cardinality of the set will be zero. So, and if you look at this example, a is uh, x squared minus 36 equals 0 and x is odd. So we have to see if there are any elements which will satisfy both these conditions. If you look at the first condition, x squared minus 36 equal to 0, so the answer is plus or minus 6. But the second condition is x is odd. But plus 6 or minus 6 are not odd at all. Therefore, there is not a single element which will be coming under the set A. Therefore, the cardinality of this set is 0 then this will become a null set. Again, you can represent it using this zero with a strike or the empty curly brackets. These are the two methods that you can use to represent a null set. Then we will look at the subsets. If you look at the definition of a subset, A is said to be a subset of B, which will be denoted by this special symbol if every element of A is also an element of B. That means if you have two sets, and we have a smaller set and we have a larger set. So the smaller set will be a subset of the larger set if the smaller set contains some elements of the larger set. And there are two types of subsets, what you call the normal subset, where you have the equality also. That means A and B sets can be equal to each other. But if you look at a proper subset, in that case, the smaller set A is always 
not equal to the larger set B. Therefore, A is always contained within the B. Then you call it a proper subset. Now we will look at an example. So we have three sets. Set A which contains 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9. Set B which contains 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. And set C which contains 1 and 5 only. So here C is a subset of A. It's a proper subset as you don't have the equal sign. If you look at the elements of C and A, C contains 1 and 5 and A contains 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9. Therefore, you can see that the values 1 and 5 are contained within A and there are more elements in A than C. So, C is a smaller set and A is the larger set and C contains 1 and 5 which is part of A. Therefore, C is a subset of A. And if you look at the second case, there you have C is a, again a proper subset of B. C contains 1, 5 and B contains 1, 5 and some more elements. Therefore, the two sets are not equal to each other. C is smaller. Therefore, it's a proper subset. But if you look at the next one, B is not a subset of A. If you look at the set B, you have elements 1, 2, 3, 5, 7 and this element 2 and 7 are not there in the set A. Therefore, you cannot have a value in a subset which is not part of the original set. Because of that reason, B is not a subset of A as the elements 2 and 7 are not part of the original or the large set A. Then we will look at some more set types. We have the finite sets. A set is called a finite set if the number of its elements can be described by a natural number. That means you have a certain finite amount that you can have as the cardinality of the set. So if you look at this example, x is an integer between minus 20 and plus 20. So there are 41 elements and the cardinality is 41, therefore it is a finite set. But if you look at this set, uh, x is an even number and x is greater than 100. There is an infinite number of elements that you can have in this set. So the cardinality of this set is infinite because there are infinite number of even numbers as well as there are infinite number of values which are greater than 100. So then we call this an infinite set. Next type of sets are the disjoint sets. We define it like this. Two sets A and B are disjoint if they have no elements in common. That means you have two sets, there are no common elements, then you call them disjoint sets. You can look at this example A which contains 4, 5, 6, B which contains 1 and 2 and C which contains 1, 2, 3, 4. In this example A and B are disjointed. As you can see there are no common elements between A and B. And uh, A and C are not disjoint because you can see that the element 4 is common to each other. If you have a common element, then those two sets are not disjoint. Final type of set we are going to look at is the power set. It can be defined in this manner. It is a collection of all subsets of a set A and it is denoted by 2 to the power A or PA. Now, if you look at this example, if S is equal to AB, then the power set of S is all the subsets that you can create taking the elements of S set. So you can see that you can take A separately, you can take B separately and we can take AB together and we have the null set. And the number of elements in the power set are denoted by this 2 to the power A value. 2 to the power, then you have uh, 2 elements here, therefore 2 to the power 2 is 4, now you have 4 elements. And if you look at this example 2, this A contains 1, 2, 3, therefore you should have 2 to the power 3, therefore 8 elements in that power set and we can write it like this. You take 1 separately, 2 separately, 3 separately, 1, 2, 2, 3 and 1, 3 and then you take all 3 together and then finally you have the null set. So again power set is all the subsets that you can create using the given elements of a set. Next we will look at another way which you can use to represent a set that is called a Venn diagram. Now for example if you have this set A which contains 1, 2, 3 and set P which contains 3, 5, 6 and you can see that 3 is common to both. So you can have a circle and within the circle you can write the values of A 1, 2, 3 and you can have another circle, circle B which contains 3, 5, 6 and the common element will be 
written here that is common to both sets a and b and encircling all those things you have the universal set which is denoted by the epsilon this method is a graphical representation where you can represent more than one set easily in the next tutorial let's look at how to do set operations